Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley Handcraft and today we're going to be doing wickless testing. But before we get into that, my name is Jeff and I make videos all about how to make candles and how to create a business around candles. And if you'd like to see any of the other stuff that I do as far as candles, the products that I make, picture stickers, and the eBooks, you can see all of that on my website at stanleyhandcrafted.com. And of course, if you wanna see any of the other videos that I make, please hit subscribe and jump to the videos tab and you can see all the videos that I've put out. But jumping into today's video, this is a question that I get a lot. Uh, I've done a couple videos on this one, but nothing on the channel. So I wanted to get this one out and that is wickless testing. Now, the problem that a lot of people run into when they start getting into candle making and even seasoned candle makers when you first get a new vessel you don't know what wick is going to go in that and this is a great way to go about testing and making sure that you get the right wick without wasting a ton of jars and a ton of wax and wicks and oils and i'm going to show you how to do exactly that now one of the problems that i ran into in the beginning was i would go through i didn't know the jar the wick size how much oil or anything like that and of course all that stuff comes into account when you're making candles and of course when you're choosing your wick so the amount of wax that's in there, the amount of oil that's in there, the style of vessel, if this is tin, if it's concrete, ceramic, or glass, it will all make a difference with the exact same wick. So what I was doing in the beginning is I would go through and I would pour six different jars with a different wick in every single one. So I would put out, so I would put six different wicks in the eight ounce jelly jar, pour every single one of them, and then light and burn every single one of them to see which had the best burn, which had the best melt pool, which had the best hot throw. And of course, you can usually find that probably a good third of the way down the candle, which left me five other candles potentially that I just wasn't gonna burn again, or they just didn't throw that well, they didn't really have a good melt pool, and it was a lot of wasted product. So, so after a while, I finally wised up and I started to go with the wickless method, and this has worked extremely well, and it saves a lot of time and money. And basically what it is, is you pour the candle and then you test a bunch of different wicks in the same vessel. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this one is we've got the candle. There's no hole in that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and place a wick in there and then we're gonna light it. And if it doesn't work, we're gonna switch it out and I'll show you how to do that. So the best way I've found to do this is to grab, I've got a long thermometer. This works perfect. A drill bit is another one. And we're gonna go ahead and find the center of the candle and we're just gonna go ahead and push that straight down, create our hole. We're gonna grab a wick and if you don't know, the reason we're doing this is because we don't know exactly what wick we need to use. So if you go to a place like Candle Science, they have probably one of the best wick guides out there and it will tell you exactly what wick should work in a vessel this size and the type of wax that you're using. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna go ahead and cut this wick off probably about four inches or so. And we're just gonna go ahead and push that straight down into the candle. And then we'll go ahead and cut that. So we end up with a perfectly cut wick right on the side of that. And then you're gonna to wanna to light that and go ahead and give it a good probably two or three hours just so that you get a full melt pool. You should have the melt pool or what this is gonna be within three hours. So what you would do is you would go ahead, you would light that wick, let it go for about three hours. And after a while, if you notice that the melt pool is only coming to about three quarters of the way out there, you know that you've got a wick that's a little too small. So what you would wanna do is we would go ahead, we would pull that wick, Go ahead and let the wax harden up completely. And then you would go ahead, you'd pick a different wick, you would make a new hole, grab a different wick, and then you would go ahead, put that down there. And on the second burn, you might leave the wick just a little bit longer so that it can cast a, like a little bit bigger flame. And then you would light the second wick and see how far out that melt pool gets. Ultimately getting to a wick that's gonna give you a full melt pool all the way across that. And if you're using wood wicks, it does work the same way. So what we would do with this one is you can get something to push that down or make a hole, but the wood wicks are pretty stiff. You can go ahead and you can push that all the way down. And then we would go ahead And again with that one, we would do the exact same thing. Now you would go through, you would light that, let it burn for about three hours, see where your melt pool is, 
and then either stick with that one or remove it. Remove that wick, let it harden back up, and then place a new wooden wick in there. So that's pretty much it with this one. A real quick and easy method for testing a bunch of different wicks in a single jar with a one pour wax. And depending on the wick guide that you use, you should be able to narrow the size of the wick down to any jar that you're using within at least two or three. You probably won't have to test more wicks than, than at least two or three. And one other thing that you wanna look out for is if you if you do get a melt pool that goes down quite a bit and you think the wax might be compromised a little bit and you're not gonna get a full melt pool on the second burn, you can actually basic, you can actually dig that wax out. And I've done this before, I've taken a spoon. Just go ahead and take that wax down, all the wax that you've actually melted, and go ahead and clean that out so that you have a nice smooth top again below the melted wax. That way, if you wanted to, you're starting with a fresh layer that has never been burned before. But like I said, a very quick and easy method. I use this one all the time when I'm testing out new jars. And it will definitely be something I do when I start testing out these jars, which is gonna be later today or tomorrow. I don't know what wicks are gonna be in this one, so I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the wax all the way up to the rim, and I'm gonna put two different wicks in this one and just see how they burn. And then after a couple hours, if they're not burning, I'm gonna go ahead and pull those wicks, let the wax harden back up, and then rotate the position of the wicks and possibly put two more wicks in there to see how they burn. If you've got any questions on this method, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'll try to go through and answer those and hopefully, and bring a lot of those questions to another video if I need to do a second part of this one. And of course, you can follow me on any of the social media platforms that I've listed down below, including my website, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, the email address if you wanna reach out, and of course, the phone number if you wanna sign up for any text alerts as far as like new wax jars coming back in stock, wax coming back in stock. I usually try to keep, I try to keep everybody updated with as much information as I can, especially with supplies being low right now with all types of vendors. So if you wanna sign up for any of those alerts, the number is 253-303-7968. And of course, like the video, subscribe, and thank you for watching.